I want to talk to you about the most important part of your organic skincare business, or if you haven't started it yet, your future organic skincare business. So if you aspire to become an organic skincare entrepreneur, you've got to watch this video. I'm Lorraine Dahlmeyer, and I've spent the last four years teaching people all around the world how to make their own organic skincare products. I'm a biologist and I run Formula Botanica, the international online organic cosmetic science school, which has taught many hundreds of people in over 50 countries how to launch their organic skincare business. Many of my students have gone on to set up or grow their own skincare company and they're having great fun running the businesses of their dreams. So over the next four videos, I want to teach you how high performance organic skincare is formulated. There's a trick to it. This is a pretty big task for four short videos, but I'm going to cover as much as I can in order to teach you as much as I can. Together we're going to run through the main formula to creating any single organic cosmetic formulation, the different types of high performance ingredients available to you as an organic skincare formulator, the six key steps to natural preservation, how it works and how you can avoid synthetic preservatives when making your skincare products. My students follow this framework when designing their natural skincare products and this framework has helped them become the excellent natural and organic skincare formulators they are who make exquisite products that wow their clients. They have used this knowledge to become expert formulators, not just following recipes like everyone else, but instead learning how to methodically test and retest their ideas and their designs in order to perfect their skincare products. And their skincare products are awesome. Don't just listen to me, look at the results. Some of them have won awards or had celebrity endorsements or been featured in major glossy magazines around the world. Their results speak for themselves. And they have used this to build real businesses. Many of them started small and only launched with two or three simple products, but those have been the very best designs they could be. And they've attracted loyal followers who buy their products again and again and again. But before we get started with my masterclass, I've got to warn you. You might have been making skincare potions for a while already, following recipes in order to make your final product. Well, I regularly see poorly designed skincare products out there where people have blindly copied recipes that they've learned on the internet and they haven't taken into account how their products are designed, how they deliver the therapeutic benefits that they say they will, or even how they make sure that their customers aren't rubbing lots of microbes all over their face because they're inadequately preserved. And that's a real risk when you're starting out. You find a website that says, hey, here's a fun way how to make lotion. You try it out, it seems to work, or so you think anyway, and you give a few samples to your friends and they love it too. But what you don't realise is that you're setting yourself up for disaster because you haven't made sure that your formulation is stable, safe, and actually does what it says it's supposed to do. But thankfully, there's a solution and I'm going to teach you it in these videos. But I'm going to go further than that because in this video series, I'm going to teach you the basics of making high performance organic skincare that is safe for the skin. You'll see in just a minute. I want to show you how to make high performance, safe, organic skincare that can make the difference for your future career as a skincare entrepreneur. I want to show you how to make products that will build you a real business, which can give you the income you need to have the freedom and the flexibility that you want. So in this video, we're going to cover the formula for putting together any natural skincare formulation. It's important to understand your ingredients and how a formulation is created. This is so you become a proficient formulator and not just someone who follows recipes. This is what will mark you out as a professional rather than a hobbyist. And in my four part masterclass video series, I will show you how to become an expert formulator in your own right. So my gift to you is not so much the individual formulas themselves, but the ability to understand how ingredients combine together to create those formulas and how to put together a formula from scratch using the method I will describe in this video. Now you can rely on untested recipes that you find floating about on the internet or you can become an organic skincare formulator who confidently knows what they're doing when it comes to making high performance products. You can be a recipe follower or you can be an innovator. So I'm sure you've seen the recipes I'm talking about on the internet, right? 
a teaspoon here, a tablespoon there. Well, we're going to do the opposite of that and we're going to think about the actual structure of your formulation first and foremost. So let's start by breaking down a natural cosmetic formulation and looking at the six key elements that form part of most skincare products. The first one of those is your foundation ingredients. Almost all natural skincare products have as their base or foundation a combination of oils, butters, waxes and waters. Sometimes these individual ingredients are used on their own and in other formulas they are blended together to create, for instance, creams, lotions and emulsions. So let's look at those individually in a bit more detail. The first one is waters. Waters include hydrosols, flower waters, or distillates, herbal infusions, and even distilled water itself. The second foundation ingredient is oils. Here I'm talking about liquid plant fats such as almond oil, apricot oil, avocado oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, etc. The list goes on and on and on. The third one is butters. These are saturated plant fats such as cocoa butter, shea butter, mango butter, coconut oil, etc. Again, there's a, a lot of them you can uh, utilise. Finally, the fourth foundation ingredient is waxes. In cosmetics, these typically include beeswax or candelilla wax, which is the vegan alternative to beeswax. Now these foundation ingredients tend to make up at least 50% of most products and in some cases over 70%. So let's just wrap that up here. 50 to 70%. Let's think of a few examples of products where you'll see the foundation ingredients forming the majority of the formula. Firstly, there are products which um, are based on water-derived ingredients. Think of toners and body sprays. Products that are based on a blend of oils and butters and waters. Think of moisturiser creams, lotions or biphase products such as makeup removers where the oil floats on top of the water. Products that are based on butters and oils only. Think of body butters, serums, body oils, massage bars. Or products that are based on waxes, blended with oils. Think of lip balms or harder creams for your hands and feet. Once you have your foundation in place, you can start to layer your formula with the addition of other ingredients. So the second one I want to look at is your active botanicals or your natural actives. <laughs> These active botanicals are your therapeutic plant extracts that are added to your product to give it additional skin healing value over and above the foundation ingredients. Active botanicals are usually of herbal origin, but can be in a variety of formats such as powdered herbs, tinctures, extracts and macerations. They typically don't form more than 1-10% to of your finished product. Let's think of some examples. You might, for instance, incorporate a herbal powder, such as nettle powder or lavender powder, into your clay facial mask. You might use a tincture of chamomile in your toner or in your lotion. You might use green tea extract in your moisturiser cream. You might make a macerated oil with calendula or marigold petals for use in your serum. You might create an extract of lemon balm in glycerin for use in your makeup remover. As you can see, the list is pretty much endless. And these active botanicals can give your product a real edge by generating additional plant-derived benefits. So the third category I want to look at is your functional ingredients. <clears throat> These functional ingredients are ingredients that may not perform an exact therapeutic role, but have a physical function to play within your product. The function may be to do with the formula itself. An example, for instance, would be an emulsifier, which binds the oil and water parts of your lotion together, or a humectant, such as glycerin, which draws moisture to the skin, 
or an exfoliator such as coconut sugar which acts to scrub away dead skin cells in a facial polish. These functional ingredients typically don't form more than 5-10% to of your finished product. So the fourth category I want to look at is additives. Additives are related to functional ingredients, but are deemed to be an added extra, such as colouring, or sometimes they're a necessity. Think of an acidity regulator, such as citric acid, which will lower the pH of your formulation, which you might need to do if it's too alkaline for the skin. Think of beetroot powder, which will give your lip tint its pink or red colour. Or think of a natural preservative, which will prevent your formulation from growing bacteria, mould or yeast, which, trust me, you really don't want. Additives are generally used in low quantities and typically don't form more than 1-5% to of your finished product. So the fifth category I want to look at is your aromaceutical or your aroma category. This category of ingredients serves two purposes. Firstly, they make your product smell lovely, and without them, natural skincare would smell a bit bland and probably a bit nutty like peanut butter. Secondly, they add a therapeutic function to your skincare. Now, in natural skincare, the aromaceuticals are the pure essential oils distilled or extracted from plants. There are also natural flavour extracts such as vanilla, which are aromas but not necessarily aromaceuticals. It is perfectly fine to use essential oils simply for their lovely smell, however as they also offer such amazing benefits to the skin, it is worthwhile utilising them fully. Now essential oils and natural aromas are typically used in quantities of 1-3% to of your finished product, depending on which oils you are using, or whether it's a leave-on or rinse-off product and where you'll be using it on the body. Finally, the last category, your extras to make your product look visually appealing and attractive, your aesthetic flourishes. These ingredients are usually of botanical origin and they add that final pretty touch to your skincare. They often also make your product look completely natural. So think of some examples of aesthetic flourishes. You could have rosebuds embedded in a massage bar. You could have vanilla pods in a body oil. You could have dried whole orange slices in a bar of soap, lavender flowers in a body scrub, or edible gold leaf in a facial mask. Aesthetic flourishes generally don't form more than one to two percent of your finished product. So there you have it. All of a sudden you can start to see the formula behind each skincare product and it doesn't seem quite so daunting when you break it down like this. This compartmentalising approach gives you an easy way to start the formulation process, but just remember it is by no means set in stone. There are blurred boundaries between the different ingredient types and some ingredients can easily fit into two or even three of the categories we just looked at. What this approach does do is that it gives you a clear formula to start creating skincare products from scratch as it makes it simpler to sketch out rough ideas for a new product. This method takes the headache out of skincare design work. I hope this breakdown was helpful to you and will help you look at your formulations in a new, more structured way. Understanding how the ingredients in your formulations fit together is key to creating top quality skincare products. But just being able to design a formula isn't enough. If you want to attract and keep a loyal following for your skincare business, your products need to have real results. It's no longer just good enough that skincare products are natural or organic. Customers now want organic skincare that actually works. And the problem with most organic and natural skincare on the market today, and the reason why organic still only makes up a tiny percentage of the global skincare market, 
is that most of the products are just not cutting edge or high performance enough to make a real difference to your customer's skin. That's why in my next video we're going to look at the different types of high performance organic ingredients that you can use in your skincare products. So make sure you come and check it out because I'll be sharing the latest scientific research into different types of ingredients that can make the difference between low performance oily gloop and high performance organic skincare. But first, right now, what I would love for you to do is to scroll down, hit that Facebook like and share button because, you know, everyone loves to be liked, and then scroll down and leave me a comment. I really want to hear from you. How is this going to fit into your life and your business? I'd love to hear how you are going to use the information in my free four-part video masterclass to make a difference in your life. I'll be reading every single one of these comments, so just scroll right down and leave me a comment.